Hi Geography students, this is Mrs. T. I'm sorry that my videos were not ready for you this week, but by now you've read that announcement that told you why. Um, I'm having trouble with the uh, FaceTime camera freezing randomly with um, Camtasia, the software that I'm using. I just downloaded updates for my operating system and, and also the software, so hopefully it's fixed, but uh, neither company, Apple or TechSmith, know the origin of the problem, so we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed that this doesn't um, freeze up. In case it does freeze up, I have curated some other videos that are already on YouTube that tell you essentially what I wanted to tell you when I was pointing things out on maps um, about biases that exist in maps. Now, there's not really a section in your textbook that covers this exactly, but I needed to go ahead and fit this in right now because we are going to increasingly refer to maps and look at maps that are depicted in the chapters of our textbook in order to better understand the cultural geography concepts that we are learning about this, this semester. Because as, as we move into chapter two and then I bring in agriculture and industrialism from the later chapters of the textbook into our discussion early on, on, I'm going to be referring to lots of different places in the world and maybe even specific cities and we're going to look at maps about how people are um, distributed across those cities or across those regions and we're going to look at the Mr. Help concepts in order to understand population expansion and migration and all those fun topics. But First, I need to make sure that you understand what the maps are that we're looking at and also how maps can be drawn, sometimes intentionally but other times not intentionally, that introduce biases. So, one of the videos that you're going to watch about biases has to do with the Mercator projection map. And you'll see what that looks like on the video that I'm going to post. But it's probably the one that comes to mind the most when I say a world map. You probably see a flat area with the ocean continued all over the place. And there's a lot of distortions in those Mercator projection maps, at least with the land masses. Those maps were created centuries, multiple centuries ago, for the purpose of maritime travel. That means sea travel. And so centuries ago, we didn't have a Garmin, we didn't have our iPhone to tell us what our latitude and longitude locations were. You had to use the stars, you had to use the moon and the sun, and you had to use these Mercator projection maps that enabled you to circumnavigate the world. Okay, so the ocean was the primary focus in those original maps. The land masses were not. So if we look at them for land mass information, the land, some of the land masses are huge. And also, sometimes the equator is not represented in the very middle of those maps. Now, the majority of land masses in the world do exist in the northern hemisphere. But what a lot of maps do is they bump the equator down lower than the middle of the map so that they can focus more on the land masses in the northern hemisphere and neglect the land masses in the southern hemisphere. And this can give subliminal, if you'll let me use that word, it's not really applicable here, but this can send misinformation to us through just perceiving the size of those land masses, that perhaps the land masses of the quote, look at my air quotes, world powers are more significant or larger actually than they are in reality. So there are biases built into maps. Sometimes it is, it can be intentional, like I mentioned. So on a smaller scale, if for instance, you're looking at a political science topic like gerrymandering, gerrymandering is something we will look at when we get to the politics chapter, but gerrymandering is a concept where uh, politicians draw boundaries for voting districts on maps to intentionally include or exclude certain types of voters in order to get their man or their woman into office. So sometimes maps can have intentional biases in them. Other times maps were produced for a particular purpose, which resulted in an unintentional bias. And even though they are centuries old, for some reason, we're still using them.
So you'll be watching a video uh, that another uh, cultural geographer teacher made about these projections. And I also have a video clip from the Oprah Winfrey show. There's a golden oldie. It was probably on before most of you were born, this particular episode that is, where an educator is showing a projection, a Mercator projection of a map and showing how the United States was typically centered in the very middle of all of the maps that were displayed on school walls, you know, for school children to look at, which also created the intentional bias that the United States was the center of the universe, so to speak. And it cut um, Russia in two, and it also puts the equator down lower so that the United States could be in the center of the picture. And so this creates um, subtle messages that affect our global outlook um, about, you know, our position in relation to other countries and other cultures in the world. So you'll see that and you'll also learn about just um, different maps in general. But I also wanted to mention this concept of social inequality and social stratification. Stratification refers to hierarchy. Hierarchy is some things that have greater social value, middle social value, lower social value. That's what hierarchy means. So social stratification or the culture's position within importance, the, the structure or the mental scape of importance in society is sometimes um, subtly uh, placed lower or like the Southern Hemisphere uh, countries that I mentioned and continents in general, the Southern Hemisphere continents are depicted very small on the map comparatively to Northern Hemis Hemisphere things. Um, and that can give us the subtle message that those things and the people there are less important than the people in the Northern Hemisphere, for instance. So we have to look at these maps with biases for our first part of week three, and then we are gonna uh, go into demographics, which is what chapter two begins with. And we're gonna look at demographics around the world. You will see a certain type of projection used, two different types of projections specifically, used in uh, chapter two. You might want to look at the fine print underneath the title of the map. It tells you what kind of projection it is and maybe um, listen to the uh, Mr. Sin channel video that I'm going to put up about the different map projections and see why perhaps our authors chose to use those type of projections instead of the Mercator. So um, I will see you again in a future video, hopefully really soon. Bye.